Hi, I'm Jesse. Whoa. Oh. And along with Alan. This is creepy. <laughs> and Anna. Did it say stigmata? Yeah. We make up the Trails to the Unknown team. We've made it our mission to explore and investigate the supernatural mysteries of the world. We don't always find what we're looking for. We called a jet in. But the journey is always the best part. As we hit the road and adventure into the unknown. Oriented. This episode of Trails to the Unknown is going to be a bit different. Way up in the Rocky Mountains of Colorado, in an undisclosed location, is a 40-acre property co-owned by Anna's dad, Ron. It's in this area where there have been many sightings and reports of Bigfoot and on one particular visit to the land, we had reason to believe that they could be on the property. This is our two-year ongoing investigation, and it all began with a bone pile and a set of tracks. Let's start from the beginning. In 1987, we came across this person who was offering 40 acres next to Estes Park. I always had passed on these opportunities before, but I said, not this time. And so we purchased 40 acres which is, we're in holders in the Roosevelt National Forest, so we're surrounded. There's a main road that runs through it, and that's at about 7,500 feet. And then it goes down to a, a stream. So what initially made you think there might be Bigfoot there? Well, I had no thought of it being there until I did a series called Chasing Bigfoot. And as I was talking to people that I was interviewing who had spotted Bigfoot, we got to chatting and this eventually we come around that we own 40 acres and of kind of prime wilderness in an area that a lot of people knew there were a lot of Bigfoot sightings. So it's like, well, maybe, who knows, why not? And one day after the, the series was done, two things happened. One, we met somebody else who was uh, owned property up there and we asked him about Bigfoot if I heard anything, and right away, oh yeah, yeah, they, they come through here all the time. It's like, well, that's interesting. First person we ask, you know, accepts that there's some Bigfoot there. And we went down and, and cruised around looking at the property with a guy named Mike Johnson, and we found some bones. We hiked down the main hill there, and we got down by the river, and we kind of were following the river along. And uh, we, we kind of came up on the other side, and there was a kind of a, a bed of sand. And in the sand, there were some, some deeper prints, if I remember. And so we kind of followed those back and there was a pile of bones. We checked it out a little bit and then we, we kept walking kind of further away, further down. And we found another pile and then another pile. And I believe all together there were four. And we found other signs, bent trees, a skull. And so we thought that was promising. On that first visit, Alan set up a trail cam to be retrieved at a later time. A week later, Alan, Anna, and Ron returned to pick up the trail cam, this time prepared to look more closely for signs of Bigfoot. And it had snowed, one of the best times to look for prints. I set up the trail camera down here by the creek and um, I retrieved it just now. There's 72 pictures on there, so I'll have to take a look at them. Well, what's interesting is with the fresh snow, there's not a single track of any kind of animal anywhere around here that we've seen other than a little bit of elk up by the road. And the only reason I can think for that is there's probably some sort of alpha predator in the area and none of the smaller animals want to be around. Whoa, look at this. Giant tracks. Wow. Coming down off the hill up here. Yep. This looks like a... I don't think an elk could walk. It looks like a two-legged animal, the way it's every other. These are really fascinating. Like, what could have made those? See this little, there's like a little divot in there? Could be mountain lion. 
the elk should have a, a larger stride than it that. It should be a little wider. And a little more narrow, maybe. These might be bear. Come here. Look, you can see the toes. Do you see claws? Those might be claws. It's heading this way. From the bones. Up there, from the bones? Oh yeah. The bones are over there. You can see um, toe and pad prints, so I'm fairly certain this is a bear. And the fact that the tracks go right underneath here, it's not a tall animal. It's something that wouldn't care to go through there. I'm gonna go up a little bit and see. So, the tracks end here. They just end. While Alan was following the tracks, Ron found a different set. More tracks? Yeah, here. What's interesting is it just goes right through this stuff, you notice that? Doesn't doesn't avoid it. That's true. You can see it pretty nicely out here. These are our original tracks right here. They look bigger now, they're deeper than the ones we saw before. Yeah, that's for sure. You can hear the um, spring falling, so everybody says the Bigfoot needs a source of fresh water. This would be it. So I followed the tracks up the hill, and they go to a little tree, and they kind of just stop. It's really bizarre. And it looks like there's maybe some older tracks that go from there up to the road, but they don't look like they connect. The one side of tracks goes in and stops. It's really weird. You know, we follow, I followed that trail, a new trail. We were walking along. Another, another trail of the same kind of footprint. Going the other side? Coming right over here. That's where we walked. Okay. Led right to this. Okay. The, the tracks were large, but it was hard to say what they were because a lot of melting had occurred around the tracks themselves. This is typical of the, the kind of Bigfoot sightings in terms of the actual imprints. There's usually a handful of prints and they come out of nowhere and they disappear. So these are the bones we found last week. They're covered in snow now, so they're still here. The, the natural spring is behind me and they, the print, the trackway we found is right behind us. So this all lines up in this whole area right near where we found those strange prints today that we're uncertain on what they are. There's definitely something going through There's here. There's definitely something going through here, something eating here, something living here. After viewing the videos from the trail cam, we found it was only triggered by falling snow. So Alan set it up in a separate location before leaving. As the season shifted from spring to summer to fall, Alan decided to bring in local researchers to check out the area and camp out for the night, including Mike, who was with him during the first discovery of the bones. So we arrived back at the scene of the crime here. Uh, we brought our friends uh, Brian, Mike, and Jeff from the, uh, what is it, Squatch? Sasquatch Investigations of the Rockies. So this is kind of a, uh, their home turf, being an Ohio boy and all, out of my element. So these guys are gonna show us what it's like to look for Bigfoot out here in the Rocky Mountains. What's the plan here? Um, go into the top side and look at that discovery that we made last time we were here. Okay, so we're gonna take everybody back down to where the bone piles were. Uh, we've got the trail camera down there and we're gonna check it out and see, maybe there's a new body down there. Ooh, that'd be, that'd be exciting. <laughs> all right. See, that's where I'd expect him to be, is on that ridge, ridge wall. Let's come back hiking up here. We got some, some big poo. What do you think it is, Jeff? Bear. Mm. Aren't they usually in a pie? Yeah, you see little bear berries in it? Oh, uh, yeah. They're, uh, probably said they're eating the bear berries. How it's fresh do you think? Pretty old. Okay. I oh. thought it was Mike. I thought we'd found Mike. Well, the bear got him. <laughs> What's left of him? Unfortunately, everyone got a little lost trying to find the bones, and the only ones who made it were Mike, Alan, and Anna. There's a tree that looks like it's been pushed over near the trail camera area, which is interesting. Any observations, Mike? 
just it looks the same except for the tree pushed over so you know that's okay so what do you think did the tree well sometimes they get agitated and they push trees over oh. uh, bigfoot i had a female that i was uh going in and visiting all the time at one of my locations and she was going to have a baby and she didn't want me to come anymore so she pushed six aspens like that over on on the trail and what mike was talking about was this puppy right here so this this looks like it was pushed over not a whole long time ago nothing's grown up in here yet you know this is all within the last month or so um yeah i don't see any evidence of any kind of other animals coming through here um we've got fresh buds on the trees even these low ones here haven't oh, been eaten off okay so, um, okay this is new mm. this now one of that that could have been me in the okay. snow okay but there is a print there there's a print there i don't know who and uh this is the other bone pile this is a vertebrae and some of the ribs from the backbone area what are you doing we are going to check the trail camera and see what we got Oh, a lot. <laughs> oh, wow. A lot? Yeah, we got a lot. We have uh, 630 clips. Looks like these branches were tripping it. Well, gotta look at them all. Yeah. yeah. Here is a compilation of trail cam videos that weren't triggered by wind or branches from our entire investigation thus far. We were surprised to see wild turkey, deer, elk, moose and a black bear which helped confirm the mysterious prints from earlier but there was no bigfoot back at the land everyone met up again to set up camp the hike was really good it was a little strenuous but it was fun get down there in the rocks and everything it was really cool i uh, saw some really cool stuff down there um, definitely a promising area i like this area a lot did you see anything like in particularly Bigfoot related or? Ah, uh, not that I saw anything yet, no. But I did hear a couple of knocks while we were just kind of kicking back over here, just taking a rest. We'd heard something, I don't know what it was, but as I heard three all together since I've been here. So it's pretty impressive. It's an area I've always wanted to get into and look and it's just, uh, it's great to be up here. Yeah, I'm glad you guys invited us up here to see what you got. For the rest of the visit, everyone would stick close to camp and see if Bigfoot would come to them. So Mike, you've been here like two times now. What, what's your overall thoughts on it? Oh, I think it's a good place. I just think we're just starting. So when you're just starting, it takes a while for things to happen. So you gotta give it time. That's what we're doing. You know, we really haven't been here after dark yet. So let's see what happens tonight. Well, like I said, I've already heard a few knocks. At least I think that's what they were. There's nobody shooting guns around here, right? No. And it, you know, not typical gunshots where they go boom, 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 you know, like you hear guns. It was just one. So if they were to come up here, which way do you think they'd come from? Up here. Okay. On the edge. I imagine they're uh, a lot quieter than we are, but we'd probably still hear them coming. When trying to make contact with Bigfoot, we do whoops, wood knocks, and rock clacks. Nice echo. Wow, yeah. <laughs> really good echo. Let's see what happens. Let them know we're here. Yeah, we had some cooked a bunch of hot dogs here by the fire, so hopefully we got all those smells out there and tonight they'll come up this hillside and pay us a visit. They made it to the next day, 
and it was a quiet night for everyone but Mike and Brian. Might have had a visitor last night, possibly. Yeah, that's what I heard. What happened? I uh, just basically, I don't know what time it was. I didn't. I was afraid to check my phone and kind of scared away. But I could hear something lightly walk between me and Mike's head, and then I heard something touching the packs a little bit. Oh wow! I could hear it, like kind of looking at it. Not too bad, but something was touching them, for sure. What time was it? I don't know. I wish I checked the phone. I didn't check. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking around 2:33 o'clock in the morning. That's what I'm kind of guesstimating. I heard it. It was really light. I heard it. I didn't say anything either. I'm surprised you heard the same thing. I thought I was going to heard it. So what did it sound like? It just sounded like something milling around. I felt some pressure on the side of the tent, but I don't know if that was just me half asleep or not. <clears throat> so what about the wood knocks this morning? The wood knocks this morning were beautiful. They were about 8.30. I was laying in bed. Jeff was kind of snoozing a little bit. And they were sounded just like my wood block. And they came from over here somewhere. Yeah. I put in fresh batteries, no joke. They last, last me three days. They shouldn't have went down. It it stopped at midnight. Really? Wow. Your recorder? Yeah, it should last three days. He said. Did you I listen had, to any of it? I I got sounds up until midnight and then it stops. Wow. Wow. And it wasn't that cold to die and kill the batteries because I've had those batteries on. No, cold and no. Let's have them walk right through here for sure. Yeah. No. Right, right in this area right here. Walk right through here. And then went to the, the packs. Just kind of heard this kind of noise. For the most part, other than battling the elements, I didn't really have any experiences. I didn't hear anything. Um, when I woke up this morning, one of my boots was knocked over that I left outside the tent, but I don't know if that could have been from me moving around or, or I don't know what. And my, uh, my, my cell phone was dead or almost dead, which is kind of weird because there's no signal up here, so I really wasn't using it yesterday. So I'm not sure if it was just from the cold or what. It's a great area and it definitely needs a follow-up. There's some stuff here that needs to be looked at. I think they're here. So yeah, we had a really great time. We appreciate you bringing us out here. Um, there's definitely some possibilities, some things. Heard some things walking around, heard some wood knocks. And so hopefully things are gonna get better in the future here. All right, so we're packing up. It's about time to head out. Um, we're gonna try again another time. All right, well, let's get out of here. I gotta get back to my road. All right. All right. We'll All right, Brian. Thank you. Well, a few interesting things that happened so far. We thought it was time to kick it up a notch. Our investigation wasn't over. We had been shooting in, on this film uh, called The Bigfoot Alien Connection Revealed. And we came across a, a woman who, had, who lived up in Washington. And she talked about how she had a, on her property an interactive Bigfoot situation. And we were kind of curious how this, how this occurred. And so Alan, again, had a chat with her about it. And we recorded a little bit about how, how this happened. And she said was, her idea was that she opened a portal. And she described a bit about how this was done using dousing rods and other techniques and gifting. Gifting is you leave something someplace and see someplace where no ordinary person would find it. And something would happen, it would move, get exchanged. And so we thought, well, let's try that. We placed a feather in a bottle, in a crevasse where nobody could find it. We did that one other place as we walked down towards the, towards the, the river. We, we also got the idea that we should announce our coming because Alan had bought this, this um, drum, which presumably had Bigfoot hair infused in it. And we were told to wrap it three times and that would kind of alert these creatures one way or another that we wanted to have contact, so we did that. The next time down was probably a month later, a month or two later. Nothing had happened with our gifting items. Then we came back a third time, and to everybody's surprise, when Alan pulled out the, um, the bottle that was underneath the crevasse, the feather wasn't in it. Gifting area is definitely disturbed. Um, things have been kind of 
knocked over and moved around a little bit. Hey, Ron. Yeah? Bottle's empty. So something had gone in, in some way or another, had taken it out of the bottle and placed it somewhere else. And it's, it's doubtful any human being could have ever done that because nobody would have ever found that bottle. The other thing that happened was this woman from, from the state of Washington had told us that if you're looking for a portal, use dousing, dousing rods. And my daughter, Anna, who's uh, kind of a sensitive, particularly with dousing rods, had, was constantly asking the question, where's the portal? Is there a portal here? And she got confirmation that there was, but we were convinced it had to be somewhere by the bone bed. But uh, the dousing rods kept saying, no, no, it's not there. It's over on the other side of the river. After we identified that the potential portal was on the other side of the river, we went, when we went back another time, I decided to use the dowsing rods and see if that still held true. And it did, it led, me, it led me there. But this time I actually crossed over and made my way up the other side. And I was probably about um, halfway up the hill towards where I was ultimately heading. I got a very intense pain in the side of my face. <laughs> And my eyes started watering, I couldn't breathe, and I just kind of was really disoriented. And then by five or six minutes, I didn't have any symptoms of that pain anymore. And um, the dowsing rods led me to an outcropping of rock. And I kind of went around the whole perimeter of it, and the dowsing rods kept kind of pointing towards the middle. And I, I eventually kind of made my way as close as I could to the middle of this rock formation. and. The dowsing rods were still pointing basically to the top of this rock that I couldn't get to. So that was kind of the end of what I could do that day. We don't really know, if you will, how to look for Bigfoot or how to record Bigfoot. With taking uh, the, the gifting aspect and working that, and I think, again, that's something that has to be worked over time if you, want to th if you think of it as trying to create a behavior response. Um, I think uh, trying the drum, you know, I, I think the whole portal concept is, is, a, is a different thing. I think there's more to explore there. Like, is it possible that in that particular area, you know, there's a spot that is used or is always a portal? I don't know. Um, you know, again, it's kind of getting to a different realm of not just Bigfooting, but this whole on a much broader scale if these things like portals exist it's like okay what does that mean you know why are they there who's doing it is this a a natural phenomenon uh you know or is it just some kind of different frequency of energy or something but the dowsing rods were you know i was starting to bring them up and they were already going you know i'm trying I'm like no no i was like where's the door <laughs> where's the door and it's like okay <laughs> and and i did that all the way around it so, I know where it is, but we'll need some gear to get to it. Huh. At this point, you may be wondering where I've been during all of this. I was still living in Ohio, but I thought it was about time to step in and to finally venture out into the woods at night. It's uh, about time I got up here. This is pretty crazy. It's incredibly squatchy. It's it's just got that vibe, that feel. It's like the the woods are just encroaching upon the road and kind of squeezing in. I kind of feel like we got a shot. The first thing we do is try a whoop to let any Bigfoot around know we were there and hope for a response. Wow, that, I, I don't know if you guys will be able to uh, I hear that on the audio, but the echo was just unreal. Really quiet right now. Um, that could be a good thing. You know, if there's Bigfoots out here, they already know we're here, obviously. Mm -hmm. And uh, they could be just hunkered down watching us. Uh, we got the trail cam. We're going to deploy that um, down by the bone pile, somewhere in that area. So, uh, you ready to make the trek? The biggest sign is just we're listening for things. We're listening for something that's walking towards us or walking with us or that kind of thing. Yeah. Let's uh, let's turn off all the lights for a second. All right. mm. 
So you guys have to see the night vision on here. This is what it looks like without it. <laughs> yeah, it's pitch black out here. It is. We're probably about three quarters of something. Away. Seriously? Can you like move a little bit? I don't hear anything. Okay. Mm. Okay, hold on. This is Like that's seriously quiet. <laughs> We finally made it down to the bones, and Alan showed me the site. So over here is where we, we found the prints earlier in the year. This is all loose dirt. You can actually walk through it if you want. There's four of these. Okay. Look like same animal, but uh, there's no skull. Really? Everything's here but the skull. It's a big animal, right? Yeah, it's something big. It's not a deer. No, well... Look at the rib bones. And the rib bones are interesting because the big rib bones are huge. Do you, do you think a Bigfoot could have done that? I mean, based on, you know, other theories, um, if it was desperately hungry or it was injured already and it just took it as an opportunity, I mean, the possibilities there. So we're going to head back. Want to... Do this last howl? Yeah. Rip it down yeah. the... Not the last howl. one, maybe, but... Yeah. We survived. Guys, great job. That is a quite a hike at nighttime. It's like 10 times more dangerous. Uh, there's elk, moose, mountain lion, black bear, everything you can imagine up here. That's the boneyard. Um, what do you think? It's incredible. Um, it, it's, it's a rush, really. It's exhilarating. Um, it kind of, you know, in a semi-safe way, really, but it still pushes uh, comfort levels and that's part of it, I think. It, it was it was great. Well, right now, this this winter has been a tough one, so we haven't been able to get up there in uh, the latter part of 2019 and the first part of 2020. So it'll be interesting to to go back up there and see if any of our gifting items have been changed, moved again. And I suspect we should take some uh, some equipment and go to the place where Alan had his portal experience. Of course, check and see if it's still there. Um, so I think there's enough history there to believe something's going on. I think, you know, we've had a little bit and some strange things happen. I think there's enough that warrants further in investigation. I want to actually uh, camp there at least one night. That's something I want to do. Um, and really, I think overall just give us the opportunity to basically canvas that area over um, a long time. According to Bigfoot researchers, it can take years to build up a relationship with Bigfoots. This is still an ongoing investigation and we won't stop trying to contact them. We'll see you all up here again in season two for one of our biggest undertakings yet.
guys like spicy stuff? Yeah. Those, we just tried some of those Lay's habanero. 